Hey everyone, it's Saturday the 21st of January and it's 9 o'clock in the evening and today I've got another model railway video for you. So in continuation from the previous video I want to look at scenery today and uh, well basically go through what I've done so far and how I did it and I've got some repairs to make to uh, some rolling stock here so I'll show you what I've got to do there and how I'm going to do it. Um, it's just custom coal wagons basically. Anyway, I've literally, well apart from the train station, I've literally got one piece of scenery that's um, pretty much complete. I just want to add a few little uh, details to it. So I'm just trying to get the camera in the position. Let me zoom in on it. There we go. I think I chopped the chimney off. I did chop the chimney off. I'm just going to zoom out just a smidge. There we go. Yes, yeah, so on that corner, I've put a little cottage. A little countryside cottage. Um, because when I first started this layout, I was like, what am I going to do on the corners? You know, I can't do a great deal with them. And that was one of the first ideas I had. Just a little cottage sitting on the corner. Um, it's got a gravel driveway. Um... Obviously a nice grass lawn. A grass lawn, you wouldn't have a lawn otherwise unless it was grass, would you? <laughs> little um, shed here, which is actually... Uh, that is actually how I got it. I didn't make it, but it looks like it's meant to be like part of a guard's van or something, like from a railway wagon. That's what it looks like. The cottage itself, I've got a little path going out to the gravel driveway there from the front door. I've got BMW X5 parked here at the minute. Um, you're not going to be able to see it from that angle, but I do have a little pathway at the back here as well. Flower beds, a couple of trees, that's about it. Oh, and a telegraph pole and a street light. And it does actually light up. You can just about see it coming on and off. You can just about see the edge of that tree light up, which is actually the house lighting up got an LED in um, part of the house. Only part of the house lights up, but that's all I really wanted, you know. I want some realism to the layout. Anyway, so um, the grass is this stuff, which you can buy in massive pots. And all I did, I got some PVA glue and I brushed it down where I wanted to lay this, where I want the grass to go. So I just brushed all the PVA glue down and sprinkled this on top, let it dry, brushed off any ax uh, excess, not access, and um, if there was any sort of bald patches, I just dabbed a bit of glue in those bald patches and sprinkled some more on. I just kept doing that until uh, everywhere was covered nicely with the green grass. Which I've actually continued on through here, which I might actually add a little bit more. You can see some bald patches there I'm not happy with. The gravel driveway I laid exactly the same way as I've done the track ballast, which is literally just lay the ballast down. So you put your ballast on first, you get your glue, your watered down glue, syringe it up and then just drip it all over. Or, as with my stepdad's method, he's got a um, squirty bowl. You can pick up empty squirty bowls quite cheap. And he just sprays it all over. But I have noticed I've got some that's fallen out there. Obviously hadn't stuck when I did the um, ballasting. But that's exactly how I did the uh, driveway as well. So I just laid it down. Um, then put the glue on. Uh, the only thing I want to do with this is put the chimneys on because um, this is actually a house I got from the stepdad so I need to replace the chimneys, I need to repair that um, and I might just add like some other bits of detail to the garden I have got a pot of figures so I might stick a couple of uh, people in here as well but I want to see if I can find or make something like a rotary line perhaps 
um, or some sort of washing line maybe. Um, perhaps a couple of uh, wheelie bins or something in there. That would be nice. Anyway, um, I haven't started roads yet and there's actually a reason for that because I wanted to start building the roads from where the train station is. I'm going to have to move you back. That. There we go. Yeah. So there's my train station. Because I need to make access at the back here for where the doors are and whatnot. You've got a little walkway through to the platform there. Um, I've got an idea of what I want to do. <clears throat> I was going to build steps up, but I've changed my mind. I want to build like a ramp up this side and a ramp up that side. So it's got a raised pathway to access all the doors and everything here. And then put a handrail or something on it. Um, excuse me, one minute. Get off. Get off. Get off. Thank you. He's chasing the bloody power cable for the camera. I don't want to chew that and get a shock from it. Anywho. Yeah, as I was saying, I want to build like a, a bit like a slope like this. But not as big as this, obviously. Um, so I'm actually thinking of going on eBay and perhaps trying to buy some used platform parts to make it with. Because I could easily just, you know, I only need a couple of the rectangle bits. So I can just basically cut about that much off the edge. You know, just wide enough to be a path. Um, and then just make a couple of slightly, slightly down bits on the end, which I'll probably use one of these for. Um, and then add the handrails and that would be that. Then I can put the path, the actual path, beside it. And then I'll know where the road's got to go. And there's quite a few methods you can use for the road. My stepdad is actually using sandpaper. Believe it or not. Very fine grit, dark grey sandpaper. Um, <laughs> which I thought was quite a good cheat. Because then all he's got to do if he wants to is just put the road markings on it. Um, I've got under here, if I can remember where they are, oh, my vintage train set has fell on top of them. I've got some um, cardboard here that I could cut to make roads with and glue that down and then just put the road markings on. So there's another method. Some people choose to paint the roads on. Um, I don't really like that idea. Um, it's okay if you're trying to make like a dirt track, you know, you can use all sorts for that. When my uh, my mother and stepdad used to smoke many years ago, <laughs> and uh, probably the first model railway I'd known my stepdad to build, he actually used cigarette ash to make like a, a dark um, charcoal -y like dirt track. <clears throat> Um, I can't think of any, well, any way, other ways that I know of to make a road. Um, and I'm not sure which method I'm going to use, but I am sure of that I'm not going to use the painting method. Um, it's either going to be that card method, or I'm going to get a roll of that same sandpaper my stepdad is using, and use that. <laughs> so, and then I just cut it down to scale, basically, however wide I want the road. Because I did look it up. Um, I think last year, you know, how wide should the road be for a model railway like this? And it, the, the general consensus I found was, however wide you think it needs to be for your vehicles and your village, there don't seem to be a set width. So, <clears throat> it's like on the ends here, I'm not sure if I'm going to put like some parking spaces in here, you know, put a little fence up for the railway and then put some parking spaces in there. Mm, I'm not going to have a great deal of room actually. Maybe we could put some railway buildings in there or something like a little railway. Um, not Sigmund's hut. They used to have all sorts of huts along the railway. So, yeah. Um, oh, lighting. That was the other thing. So, what I've chosen to do to operate my lighting is use or build a switch box like this. 
I think you can actually buy them pre-built if you wanted to, but I chose to build mine. Um, yes, yeah, so that one switch literally just operates the street light and that cottage on that corner. That's all that switch does. And then maybe I could put the main village street lights on this one, or town street lights, or whatever you want to see it as. I'm going to completely leave it open to the imagination. If you want to see it as a little village, see it as a little village. If you want to see it as a little town, or you know, part of a town scene, see it that way. Um, yeah, anyway. These are all commoned up with a live. So I've already done that in there. So literally all I'd have to do is connect the ground up and alive to whatever switch I want to use for that particular circuit. Uh, now street lights. <laughs> There's a lot of different designs out there and some of them can be extremely expensive. You know, you can get these cheap little ones, which are LED, and they are great if you want to go for like a, um, a period thing. You know, like the 60s, 70s, 30s, whatever, you know, you know, whatever decade had this style of man. Um, or, as I've used one as a decorative street light in a garden over on the corner here. Um, or you can go modern. They do make modern street lights. I have got one here. But I'm not sure I'm actually going to use these because I don't like them that much. Not now, anyway. I think it's just a, a modern style. You need two wires there. You've got your enamel wire, so you just got to, um, you know, put a bit of emery cloth or something over the end to get the enamel off. And you've got this very thin wire, look at it. But you do have to put a resistor in line with these. Because, um, yes, these are 3 volt, but, you know, a common power supply is 12 volt. So, you would need resistors. And thankfully, when you buy packs of these street lights, um, they actually do come with. I'm getting tangled up around another street light. They actually do come with um, resistors so you can use them on 12 volts. And obviously, if you're using a different power supply for them, like a 3 volt power supply, you could run them without a resistor, but. I wouldn't recommend it because they wouldn't last that long. It would uh, shorten their lifespan, so you'd have to figure out what uh, resistor to put in line. So really, I'll just put this in wherever I needed it. You just drill a little hole, poke that through, and you can actually adjust it. That's why this base bit moves, so you can set the height to whatever height you want. And just have that bit poking through the bottom of your base. Um, yeah, then just solder one of these resistors in line. I don't think it actually matters which wire it goes on so long as it's there because it'll um, limit the current going through it. That's what they're called, a current limiting resistor. <clears throat> it just, like I said, prevents you from, um, or prevents the, it makes the LED last longer basically and allows you to use it on uh, different voltages without actually having to, you know, use any complicated circuitry or anything. And as I'm running all of mine on a 12 volt power system, uh, I've got the resistors there, so easy enough. Like I said, they come in the pack anyway. I think they come in like packs of five, these street lights, or they're used to. And like I said, they're, um, <laughs> there's all sorts of designs out there. And some of the more fancier designs are um, more expensive. Um, but I do plan to have street lights. I do plan to have some of the buildings light up. But what I will do is have all the buildings sort of light up, but have them sort of switch uh, differently. So I might have three or four buildings on one switch and three or four buildings on another switch, just so I can change things up a bit. Um, which means I might actually have to make a second switch box. Which would be easy enough because I'll just daisy chain a live and a neutral from this one over to the next one. So that wouldn't be too difficult. And these, if you wonder what the boxes are, they are just um, electronic project boxes that I got off eBay. They're not too expensive either. Same with the um, toggle switches. 
Right. Well, what I need to fix are these coal trucks because I actually put the coal in these myself. And some of these are actually got a bit loose and a bit, and they're flaking a little bit. In fact, I do want to fill that one up a bit more. There's some loose stuff that I picked up off the floor, so I'm just going to fill that in. I'm going to make one from scratch as well. So I'm not sure exactly how you do it, because this is really simple. My stepdad showed me how to do this. So I'll just put that in there, so I need to get the lid off my glue. I have given it, I was going to say I gave it a stir, I actually gave it a good old shake. So, I'll just drop me a coal in there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually zoom in on that. So you can see a bit better. I'll try and keep it out of the way, so. Get me glue. There we go, so I've syringed a load of glue up. You literally just try to gently, it's not that easy sometimes. Just like that, all over it. I'm actually going to go over the whole thing again on most of these because some of these uh, haven't stuck properly. It's, it's as simple as that, you just syringe it over like that, trying to soak the whole lot. And then just let it dry. And like I said, I want to do all of these. I think the problem is, might be that I actually watered the glue down a bit too much. I think the next batch I make, I'll probably uh, use a bit less water. Right, well, I'm not going to bore you with that. I've only got another, what, two. Actually, I might as well do a ball. Then I've got one here which is ready to go for a new batch. Oh, actually, before I do that last one, where's it gone? I had a bag of um, coal. Somewhere. I didn't leave it on the floor, did I? I've got a bag there, but that's the wrong bag. <laughs> um, yeah, this one's... That's a bit finer, this stuff. I want the... Um, not as fine stuff. Might be able to see it if I didn't have so many bloody locomotives out here on the desk. <laughs> Just gonna check under here, make sure it's not uh, on the floor or something. Pretty certain I actually got it out and chucked it up there on the table with all the other stuff because I thought, you know, I'll get prepared and I'll get everything out that I need. Either that or I'm just going totally blind and I can't see it. You know, it's probably staring me right in the face actually. I've got a little bit more here. Not going to be nowhere near enough to fill that hole in. No, it's quite a deep one. Quite a uh, chunk has fallen out of this one. I haven't gone anywhere either. I've only been here. <laughs> um, okay. Back you up a bit. get it. It was it was here. It was it was literally here. Now it's not here. Now I'm confused. <laughs> right. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna fill up again. And get this one um, covered. And yes I am dripping glue everywhere other than where I want it, but that doesn't matter, it'll just dry clear so be a PVA glue mix, it'll just peel off. Right. I've got the pot of gravel under there, I know where that is. I've just uh, managed to lose the gravel, uh, the coal that I wanted. Right, I'm just going to pause the camera for a minute and see if I can find the uh, 
elusive bag of coal. Found it. It's actually on the floor under there, right under my nose. And you see, that's a bit more coarse than the other bag. If I'd used the other bag, then I'd have used that, but it wouldn't look right with this. I was just thinking I got a bit of a, a low spot there, but I suppose in real life they're not going to be exactly level, are they? Right. Just realised the truck I'm working on is off camera now. Right. That's the first one here. I'm going to stick uh, some of this in. And then I'll roll these out of the way. Grab my syringe. Glue all over the bench. Oh well. So I'm going to give that a good soaking there. See, that's the best thing about using PVA. It does um, dry transparent, so... Oop. My syringe suddenly went pop. <laughs> oh, I need that out of the way now. Go up there out of the way. So, you can actually buy trucks with the coal pre-fitted, but it doesn't look as good. So, what my stepdad told me to do is to literally get just a piece of foam. Any foam, anything like this will do. Cut it to size. Put that in there. And the reason you do that is it sort of acts as... Do you think I've got a hill? There. <laughs> Right, hang on. Wrong way. I've hooked it up onto the train so uh, it doesn't go rolling away. <laughs> yeah, the reason you put a bit of foam in is so you use less of your um, gravel or your coal ballast. Because bags of this can uh, get quite expensive as well. So you put your bit of foam in. I suppose you could use a bit of cardboard. Um, or anything really, just to act as a base. And then what we've got to do, I'm going to do it uh, probably the hard way, because I haven't got nothing else to get hold of it, unless, you know, can I do it this way or is it going to go everywhere? Let's fill the top up with your coal. I had a feeling I was going to spill some. I just realised my foam bit doesn't go right to the end. It's a bit small for the truck. Never mind, I'll just fill that little gap up. Like that. Fill it a little bit. You just get your glue and you just draw with your glue. It's that easy. I have to say, when I first started modelling like this, I was actually nervous because I had no idea of what I was doing at all. You know, I saw, well, I've got the advantage because I've got my stepdad. You know, he's built several over the years and they've had to be dismantled because of moves and whatnot. I must remember to actually go and rinse that out, otherwise that'll dry again. Um, I'll do that in a minute. Right, I can't remember if I actually mentioned um, about cars in the last video. I don't think I did. 
So obviously most layouts you're going to need traffic and vehicles. And I've actually got quite a range here as you can see. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use on the layout and uh, I'm not going to glue any of these down simply because I want to change them around. Um, Send that up there out of the way. There we go. Yeah, so I've got vintage, I've actually only got the one sort of, well, I say modern, this is the newest bus that I've got. And when you're looking for your vehicles, you need to find ones that are of a, a 176 scale. Which means, because uh, my friend uh, Kat did ask why I wasn't using matchboxes or hot wheels well they're too big I'll get the um, there's the matchbox and there's the actual scale car that you need beside it a lot smaller <laughs> so there's the matchbox there's an Oxford diecast problem is this costs more than a brand new one of these brand new matchbox you're looking well depending on where you go at one pound sixty to one ninety nine these Oxford diecast cars start from about five pound, and that's second hand. <laughs> yeah, I actually bought a load of mine from a car boot last year. But uh, when you look at these, look at the immense detail on this. You've even got the door handles painted in on the doors. You've got all the chrome trim around the windows. Or at least around the rear window. You've got the um, black vinyl roof on this one. Your taillights and bumpers all detailed in. There's even got a number plate written on there. That's way too small for my eyes to read, but if I get magnifying glass, you've got the fog lights. All painted in, the headlights. Even the wiper blades are detailed in as well. And they have an interior. So... You know, it's probably not easy to detail something this small, so I expect that's why they demand quite a price. And obviously, the bigger the vehicle, the more it's going to cost. If you want commercial vehicles, they're going to cost a lot more. Um, but worth it, in my opinion. And I have been tempted to actually really sort of start this as like a side collection for diecast. I mean, look at this. You've got all the trims around the back window. This is a Mark I Transit van. All the black rubbers around that back window. Rear door handle, rear lights. It's even got British Rail written on the back. You've chrome bumpers. Door handles. Again, the wipers are there. Lovely little models. I've actually seen more detail on these than I have, you know, some of the larger scale models that I've got. <clears throat> I've got all sorts on here. Um, some of what I got from a car boot last year. And actually this lot, these are all the right scale. But this is, well apart from that, that's a plastic Ford Corsair that someone's painted very badly. I might go over that. I think, well I say badly, I think it's just got a bit beat up over the years. So I might actually repaint that myself. But, uh, yeah, most of this lot is sort of more modern stuff. Um, but like I said, it is 176 scale. Got a Range Rover. But a lot of these I actually found in a charity shop. We've got another BMW X5 there. Could that be an unmarked police car? Who knows? That one I don't think is really any. I don't think I'll actually even use that one. The detail isn't that good, so I don't actually think it's meant to be. But when you look at all the other ones, it's got all the full detail on it. You know, the headlights, amber turn signals, and <clears throat> then this one, apart from a couple, it is mostly older stuff. We've got a new little Mercedes. Or newer. Is that C class, I think? Uh, got an 
Allegro Estate. Vintage police car, we've got a Mark III Ford Escort XR 3i police car, I think that's Essex Police if I remember rightly. What else have we got in here? We've got P6. I've actually got a Ford Angler with a light up blue light on it. That's what them wires are for. It's a bit big personally, but that's the smallest at the time my stepdad had. There's another police car. And we got Bedford CA Nort Float. Which I actually bought that one locally. I found that on Facebook. Over a year ago now. That one I can't remember what it is. Not even um, recognise the tail light. And of course I've got some um Oh, I didn't realise I had that. I actually forgot I've got um Dell Boys. The light van here. And, you know, we've got a Met Police BMW there. And one more police car here. Yep, Jaguar with the mirrors. Look at that, the wing mirrors. Um, yeah, so I think I've got a good mix of some you know, oldies and newies. Which is what I want, you know, as I'm going for the preserved railway with a more modern day theme. I thought I'm going to need modern vehicles as well as the vintage. And what I will do, I plan to put like a, a village green or something in here somewhere. And I will have like perhaps a classic car display on here. Here's a couple of my favourites before I show you these plastic ones. A little Golf GTI. Mark 1, yeah, Mark 1 Golf GTI, I just had to check the tail lights. And a Mark 1 bright yellow Ford Fiesta. I'd have loved one of these if I was old enough back then. Hard to find now. But, uh, oh yeah, I've got a Ford Capri here as well. I've got some ambulances. I've got a couple of Bedford ambulances here. In uh, different colours different parts of the UK and to go with the modern theme and this has got um, door mirrors on it as well a transit van for Royal Mail uh, yeah anyway many moons ago you know when um, I don't know if you can still get them new but yeah these are actually Triang cars and they came with um, a little Triang vehicle transport that I've got in, in my rolling stock collection. There's actually a few more. I think there's about five of these in total for it. And I think I found that one at a car boot. But I just recognised the bottom of it as a, being a Triang. I believe. I don't think my uh, magnifier is in here so I can't read it. And the light bouncing off the shiny base isn't helping either. I'm not sure what the van is. I think it might be a comma looking at that. Or maybe a Ford Thames. I'm not sure. I'm going to keep that out though because once I find my magnifying glass I'm actually going to take a peek at that. Right. Um, buildings. I haven't discussed buildings have I? So. I haven't actually built any of my buildings um, either from kits or from scratch, actually a teleporky. There is one somewhere, I don't know where it is, that I actually built using two um, decrepit buildings. So um, yeah, this is, yeah, I think I got this from my stepdad, this uh, station and platform. Same as that cottage. And I ended up, at one point, I actually had three of these pubs. Um, two of them, the worst out of the three, I took apart for parts to fix this one because this one was the best out of the three. Saying that, these windows are sort of falling in a little bit, and there's nothing I can do to uh, fix that because I can't get in there to. Not unless I take a craft knife and just cut that base out, but then I'll be losing some of my detail in there. 
yeah, but some of the windows had fallen out of this, so I fixed that. I've still got chimneys to fix because neither of the other two had chimneys either. When you take these off of layouts and you transport them, I can guarantee they're going to get knocked off. No matter what you do, they're going to get knocked off. Um, yeah, you can buy buildings pre-built like that that have been removed from layouts quite cheap on eBay, actually. They don't sell for quite... Um, that must spit me words. I don't sell for a great deal. Or you can go to like a model railway shop. The nearest one from from here, I believe, is in Alsham at the Bureau Valley Railway. And they sell like the Metcalf model kits, which my stepdad has been building up for his. So at some point, I want to go across to Alsham and uh, perhaps get some terraced housing and. Have a go at building these kits because I've never built one. Um, I can't even uh, show you the one I cobbled together because I can't find it. <laughs> Not at the minute. Um, I do plan to do other videos similar to this. Um, so I, and when I find it, I'll include it in that. I've got bits of coal stuck on here now. Oh well, we'll just pretend the um, trucks had a spillage. I have got one house, again I got it off my stepdad, I've just got some wonky chink, uh, chink, chink in me. I've got a serious speech problem tonight, haven't I? Um, a chimney issue as well. These ones just need gluing back down though, they're fine. We're missing one from that one, we're missing them from the back. There's a little semi-detached uh, house here that I do want to use on this when I've got my road plan sorted at least. I love the bay windows. I'd love a house with a bay window like that. Although, I wouldn't like it when it's directly out on the um, footpath. <clears throat> Look at that, it's even got curtains up the windows. If I wanted to put um, lights in this, I would just have to pop a hole each side and then just pop the LEDs in. And you can use all sorts of LEDs. You can get little white LEDs with the wires already attached. You can get them without the wires attached and do it yourself. You can get like little surface mount ones if you preferred. Now that would also depend on the uh, job you're doing as well and what you need them for. Uh, this is going to be difficult to light up but I am thinking of actually changing all of this anyway, I'm not sure. Um, it is looking a bit rough around the edges. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bad thing, as it is meant to be a preserved railway, you know, maybe it should look a bit rough and a bit weathered. <clears throat> but uh, lighting it up ain't going to be easy, because I've already glued it down. <laughs> um, I don't really want to pull it off, especially on this, because it's going to damage the um, platform as well if I try and peel that off. So that may not get lit up, unless I can find a way around it. Um, I mean, I could put like some platform street lights on at one either end, maybe. That wouldn't be uh, too difficult to do. Would it smudge? Is he actually visible on camera? Yep. <laughs> right at the top there. He's actually been quite well behaved lately, I'm impressed. Normally he charges around the flat like a lunatic at night, but uh, no, he's been pretty quiet. Apart from chewing on my uh, camera power cable earlier. Um, I think for the moment... That's all I can tell you on scenery. I mean, you can make your own trees, but I've not done it myself and I'm not sure how to do it, so I can't really talk about trees. Um, or you can, you can go out, you know, and buy uh, pre-made trees. That's what these two are on the village at the end there. They are actually two plastic, you know, prefab trees. Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh yeah, I did have an issue with my uh, power supply for the controller earlier. It died on me. 
I think it got a bit too hot because it didn't like running the train. So I unplugged it from the socket and I just let it cool down while I was eating dinner and whatnot, plugged it back in and it's worked fine ever since. But I had left it plugged in, um, well, since the last video actually. It's been, what, a couple of days ago now? So yeah, it probably doesn't like being plugged in. I mean, it is an old original horn before the particular controller I'm using, but just in case, I do keep a few around as spares. Um, I've actually got another one in there and I've got another one in a drawer. I don't know why it's in a drawer behind me. It shouldn't be in there, but it is. So I've got at least three spare in case one goes kaput. I think they check out sort of 16 to, yeah, I think it's about 16 volts they check out. It is a Hornby one as well, so it is genuine. <laughs> I'll just switch that the wrong way, right here. I actually started moving before I'd even turned the dial. That is so smooth. And I must have a day spot on the track because it's the stop dead. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Either day spot on the track or um, managed to wheel spin it. Really is it that gutless? I've only got what six trucks on there full of coal. Well, I suppose in theory partially full of coal. You can have to, I just realised you couldn't see what I was uh, doing. It's only moving the train back and forth, that's all. I'll just put it back at the uh, platform. <clears throat> I suppose in theory you could put whatever you want in it, it doesn't have to be coal, I mean you could put in, where's it gone, you know, gravel, that's the gravel I bought for the driveway, I suppose I could make a gravel car park if I really wanted to, yeah I suppose you could put that on there and have a, you know, a gravel train, perhaps come from a gravel quarry, it doesn't have to be coal, I was trying to think what else you would perhaps transport via trucks back then. No, I can't remember. <laughs> can't think of it at a minute. Anywho, I'm going to end the video there as I can't think of anything else to add at the moment. Uh, but like I said, I do plan to do more videos like this. So whatever I've forgotten in this one, I can add in the next one. So uh, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I will leave links to my other two channels the gaming channel and the lego channel down in the description below along with a link to uh, the discord server which covers all three channels i didn't want three separate um, discord servers so i just sort of just rolled everything into one there's a channel for every subject on there pretty much um yeah so i will see you in the next video bye